Hi guys and girls, I'm Obsidian Ant and welcome back to the beta for Elite Dangerous. I'm taking a look here at the Engineers, that's the latest patch for the game, and today we're going to see what the new mission system's like. There's a new mission board and a bunch of new missions as well, and the old missions also work in a different way. The one I've just picked up there is to go and collect some items out of a signal source. That actually works different to how it used to, and we'll get to that in a minute. And I also went ahead and picked up another mission here, an assassination mission, this time to kill a terrorist leader. Now, you used to just have to go out and just find them in space. You no longer do that. You actually have to hack a computer to determine the location, the computer on a planetary surface, and then you can find the system that they're in. So basically, it seems that a whole bunch of the mission types now have a multiple steps to them, and that keeps them a lot more interesting and also makes them a little bit more challenging, as you'll see by the end of this video. Things didn't really go to plan. A lot of that was down to the fact that this is beta, so I didn't really get to complete everything I intended to show you. But nonetheless, we do get to have a good first look at just how these missions work. As you may have noticed, I'm in a favourite system of mine, Kashpoo's, and the mission was just a short distance away. Now, I've got to salvage some encrypted data, and the reward for this mission is some cracked industrial firmware, that's a new material type, and some in emergency power cells. I'm not sure what they're used for, but maybe we'll find out when I've got them. Now, when you jump into the system here, there's two ways of finding the signal source. You don't just look around randomly anymore. You can just use the nav beacon or do a discovery scan like I just did there, at which point you get a mission update, which tells you the location that the signal source should be at. We go to the mission here, and it should show us where we need to head towards. There we can see we need to head to the moon A7A. So, well, whereas previously, when looking for something like this, we'd just fly around randomly in space, we could even slow our ship right down to its slowest supercruise speed and just wait for a signal spore source to spawn in front of us. And that either may or may not have contained what it was we were looking for. Now it no longer looks for that, we need to find a specific location. And as you saw, jumping into the system here and doing a scan will give us a rough idea of where that location will be. But it's not close enough, it doesn't give us the exact precise location, we still need to do a little bit of searching when we get there. And just sitting in a spot, moving at the slowest speed will not spawn at the signal source you're looking for, it's a mission signal source rather than just a standard one. Now something else that has changed with the signal sources, and hopefully I'll get to show you that in this video, is that when they do spawn in space, they're regular signal sources, you can just select them, point your ship toward them, and within a few seconds it will tell you what that signal source actually contains, and it will also give you a threat level of that signal source. So here I am orbiting the moon, trying to find the mission signal source, but it's not actually coming up, and I spent quite a while actually looking for this, wondering if I was actually doing something wrong. I talked to the forums to ask for a bit of help, but before I got any answers, I managed to work out a way of discovering that the signal sources just like in real life when you're trying to find anything you've got to be a bit logical about it and a little bit methodical so with the center point being the moon that the mission actually told me the signal source should be at I would fly out from there towards the closest planetary bodies and the closest moons and then back again and then out again and this takes a little bit of time but you do risk getting interdicted and various other things happening. You can even find some other decent signal sources. But eventually, the emission signal source did appear. And you'll see it says it's an unidentified signal source, even though it's a mission one. And this is how they all work now. If you, once you've pointed your ship towards it, it tells you what's in there. In this case, it's a threat zero. It's blue because it's a mission one. So when I get there, I can drop off out into the signal source. One other thing you may have noticed that's changed is that the distance you can drop out of these things has been dramatically increased in some cases you can drop out at 10 megameters or even 5 megameters for some reason that distance no longer seems to be consistent at any rate when I got out here I could see there was a whole bunch of encrypted data storage capsules here and I only need four of them for the mission so rather quickly I decided to scoop them up before any ships come along now the uh, signal source did say it was zero threat but that didn't necessarily mean that some pirates or something like that wouldn't appear later on and as you can see two ships did jump in here while I was scooping now these two didn't pose any threat to me they didn't threaten me and they didn't try and attack me but what they did do was start scooping up the scanisters that I was scooping up and the NPCs can be very good at doing this and they can do so very fast as well Although there was a load of canisters here, so I wasn't too worried about being able to get the ones that I needed. I only needed a few more at this point. 
But just as I was going in for a few of them, they did sometimes get nabbed by the NPCs as well, so I had to be a try and be a little bit quick off the mark. So in addition to the fact of having to try and locate these signal sources now, it also seems they have a little bit of unpredictability about them. You can have NPCs drop in and try and scoop up the things you're trying to scoop up, and I suspect you can also get pirates or other hostile ships jump in and have a go at you while you're trying to do this. And you can see that that one actually got stolen while I was trying to take the capsule. Lucky there was another one right nearby, and this was the final one for the mission, at which point the ship's computer tells me mission complete, and then I can head back to Neville Horizons back in Kashbu to hand the mission in. So it all went pretty smoothly. However, I did discover one thing whilst testing out these missions, and that's when you discover your mission signal source, if you happen to get successfully interdicted and are pulled out of Super Cruise, when you get back into Super Cruise, the mission signal source will once again have disappeared and you'll need to try and locate it again. And chances are it will be in a slightly different location to how it was previously. So there's still an element there of it being randomly generated, but it's very different to how it was previously. You may have noticed that as I jumped back into Super Cruise there, I received a message. And if we have a look at what that message is, it's a little note telling us that we've successfully completed the mission and telling us where we need to head back to. Now, I've got to admit that it is tempted to think that despite all of these changes to the mission system, they are the same old missions. But keep, keep in mind that Frontier, I've only just started this process and they've said that there's going to be a lot more new missions coming later down the line. A common phrase from Frontier at this point, but one which nonetheless they usually follow through on. So back here at Crush Pose, I handed in the mission, and you can see the new mission complete screen. It actually gives you more of a breakdown of what you've achieved with a little speech there, a little sentence from the governor or the mission giver explaining what you've actually achieved for them. And you can see here my reputation with this particular person is allied, meaning I get slightly higher graded missions for them, and ones that are a bit more rewarding. Now it was time to head for the assassination mission, but before I could do that I needed to find out where the location of the mission target was. Now there's a computer down here on this base, protected within a large outpost, you can see the size of it is indicated by the three pluses there. In addition to that, it turned out that this base was a medium security one, so I was curious as just how much of a challenge that was going to be. You can see also that it's being patrolled by a little viper there and having air defence is something new to the latest patch. But despite that, I wanted to see if I could get into the base in my old way of doing things, and that was just to land slightly outside of the defence perimeter, and then simply drive into the base, and either attack it, or just hack the computer node that I needed to hack. Something I've done many times before, on my own with a lone SRV. And if this didn't work out, the plan was then to try and come back with the ship and take out some of the defences that way. So here from the distance you can see the base is pretty quiet, but there are some sentries there, there's some drones, and up the top you can see the, the Viper still flying around. Now I did get the trespass warning there, you probably noticed, but that's something I decided to ignore. I was wondering just how much of a threat these guys were going to see me as, and even if they did see me as a real threat, what would they actually do about it? One other nice change is that even from a distance now you can see your mission target. Before you used to have to roam around a bit to try and actually locate it, but you can actually lock onto that from miles away. But you can see here now that they're escalating the warnings to me. I've now got a fine. Probably enough time to still clear out the area before they decided to attack, but I wanted to get in nonetheless and now you can see they've finally gone hostile and you can see here all sorts of alarms going off and that they're indeed starting to attack me. Now keep an eye on my shields and pay attention to just how quickly they go down. There's a defense turret here. They're normally very easy to take out in the SRV, which I decided to do there, but I'm still being attacked by the sentries and I don't know if I'm actually being attacked by the vulture up in the air as well, the viper rather, but there was a whole load of hostiles on the radar that you could see there. So I didn't last more than five seconds. Bang. As I said, the plan though was to return back in my ship but look at this, I was hit by a beta bug. There was no way to respawn and no way to get back into my ship again. The only option seemed to be to take a free basic sidewinder, so I end tasked the client and loaded it back up again and was yet again presented with a screen that only gave me the choice of a sidewinder or an eagle back in LHS 3447. Whilst there I picked up a cheap ASP, outfitted it with the best jump drive to help me get back to the mission area as quick as possible and hopefully retrieve my vulture. 
En route, I discovered this encoded emissions detected signal source with a threat of zero, so I decided why not just jump in there and see what there is to find. Turned out it was a salvageable shipwreck with a private data beacon. So coming in a little bit hot here, I managed to crash my ship into it, but no damage done. And just pointing the ship at it, you get a scan there, and that gets as encoded as an abnormal compact emission. Something, I believe, which should have an additional purpose elsewhere in the game at a later point, maybe. I also found here some alloys which I decided not to bother with. I simply left them in place and went back to the station, hopefully to retrieve my vulture, because at this point, I had absolutely no idea where it was at. Now, both the galaxy map and the system map showed that my vulture should be located within the system I was doing the mission in, because I docked here at this station in order to pick up an SRV. But unfortunately, that turned out to not be the case, so the vulture seems to have disappeared into thin air, and unfortunately at this point, I was running out of time to get this video done. So as I said right at the beginning of the video, things didn't really go as planned, but nonetheless, this did serve as a good first look at the mission system, and I'll try and pick up where I've left off there once I've got a new fighter ship sorted out. Overall, I think these are some really good changes for the game, and despite the fact that the missions for the most part are essentially the same, they do now have multiple steps to them, and they're much better presented, and I think that this is going to give much better missions further down the line when Frontier finally introduce them. Let me know what your thoughts are on it, I'd love to hear from you in the comments. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.